Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. Captain Marty here once more. Uh, we're heading into the weekend. We got a inshore fishing tournament. I'll tell you more about that at the end of today's fishing report. And there is some things that have improved, especially as it pertains to some billfish. So just stick around. Uh, I'll be right back to tell you all about it. Teaches Lair Marina in Hatteras Village is the closest spot on the Outer Banks to the Gulf Stream. Just inside Hatteras Inlet, Teaches Lair is fully loaded with bait, tackle, ice, snacks, and drinks for your fun-filled day out on the water. Want to get rigged up to catch the big one? Lee and the gang in the tackle shop can outfit you to catch whatever is eager to get hooked. To see the marina, the tackle shop, or to book a charter, go online to teacheslair.com. Teaches Lair Marina in Hatteras Village. Your fishing venture awaits. Boasting phenomenal seafood dishes, a great menu, and waterfront views with deck seating, Striper's Bar and Grill at the Shallowback Bay Marina in Manio serves a casual, fun-filled dining experience with an Outer Banks flair. With three full Floors to choose from, you're bound to find the perfect seat for you and yours while enjoying great food and fantastic drinks. To see our menu and to catch a glimpse of the beautiful views, go online to stripersbarandgrill.com. Stripers Bar and Grill at the Shallowback Bay Marina in Manio, where everyone's a VIP. All right, so as we work our way through our report today, as I mentioned, there is some stuff that will set this one apart a little bit. Um, this is the time of year where our reports are very similar day after day after day because not a lot changes like it does in the spring and the fall where you get bigger quantities. But what you do get right now is more variety. And uh, this is the time of year when the weather has been decent. The guys that are running offshore boats enjoy this time of year because you get some slick calm days. You get to prop your feet up and steer steer with your toes and... You ain't hanging on all the time. Your levels of seasickness are way less. So it's a good time of the year to be a guide. And speaking of that, the guides down in Hatteras, where I got my North Carolina start a long time ago, rather not even say how long ago that was, but they had a, another day of good blackfin tuna fishing. They've been catching some dolphin, small baler dolphin, mahi, whatever you want to call them. And uh, there's a scattered wahoo in the catches, a scattered, very scattered sailfish being caught. Just kind of a pick right now, but you add a lot of that stuff together, these guys come up with a day. Plus, they have diversified, and they can do other things, too. Sometimes they'll do a little bottom fishing. Both of our fleets, Hatteras and Oregon, now bottom fish when necessary which I, I grew up doing it in Florida on headboats, but it was frowned on <laughs> during my offshore charter career at Oregon Inlet. Really frowned on. But now it's just common. It just shows you how things change. And then doing that, they catch things like tilefish and sea bass, amberjacks, and occasionally, especially down in Hatteras, a grouper or a snapper. It's kind of, kind of neat, really. Uh, the inshore fleets uh, down there, and Hatteras, they've been catching some African pompano this week. You talk about a hard-pulling fish. I really don't know a whole lot about them, as I said yesterday, but they're there. And uh, they're also catching some bluefish, some Spanish mackerel, and occasionally a bottom fish when they do that. Oregon Inlet Fleet, this is one of the areas where we had something kind of new. And I, yesterday, just really, really underreported Tom Krause's catch of, I think it was eight, looked like about eight white marlin yesterday on his boat out of Pirate's Cove, and I just didn't get that report in time. So today I looked a little deeper, and darn if he didn't go out today and catch five white marlin and what I think is three sailfish for eight more. As he said, the seniors, it's the seniors tour, even though he and I are the same age, but uh, good for him. I'm glad to see a few white marlin showing up. They've been north of us. I was talking to Rod Zulo out in Montana, a former Oregon Inlet mate, world-renowned artist and sculptor and chocolate company owner. And uh, Rod and I were thinking the white marlin seemed to be real sensitive to comfort for them. The water temperatures they really look for, they're very, very particular. And that water has been way north of us the last two years. So maybe they're working their way back down. That would be a great thing. They also had some blackfin tuna, some uh, some mahi in the catches there, the inshore boats, Spanish mackerel and ribbon fish. And there were a few cobia caught. These are cobia that are coming down out of the Chesapeake Bay, the same ones that went north by us in the spring in the early summer and went up into the bay are now on their way back they're definitely migratory and they'll i guess they'll head all the way down to florida before it's over with pier and surf fishing we did have a few cobia i know uh there was at least one caught on Jeanette's pier 
So that is, I think it was like 30, 35 pound cobia caught on Jeanette's. And there was also some false albacore, uh, Spanish mackerel, all that type of stuff is kind of the the advanced class, but in the surf and on the piers, there's also that really enjoyable, really relaxing summertime bottom fishing bite. And that includes a little bit of everything, sea mullet, bluefish, croakers, spots. Uh, you're going to stumble across a, a skate or a ray, a small shark, a black drum, things like that. And if you are ready when the Spanish mackerel come by, they just go up and down the beach all day. You'll have a metal lure ready, and you'll catch some Spanish mackerel. So nothing really has changed there. Going to puff it up too much. It is what it is. It's summertime fishing. So we'll take a little break, and I'll come back and tell you about some stuff that's going on in the sound. Real. That's the first word that comes to mind when I think about Outland Seafood in Mans Harbor. Yeah, they're the first and last place you see coming to and leaving the Outer Banks on Highway 64 in Dare County, but they're also real when it comes to fresh local seafood. Troy Outland, real. Curtis and Josh, real. The indoor crab shedders, real. Stop by and see for yourself right next to White Shopping Center and check them out on social media. Outland Seafood in Mans Harbor, real. All right, our backcountry report is uh, very consistent, and that is very good because we have a tournament coming up on Saturday, the first ever, first annual Gibbs Shoal Fishing Tournament will be going on this Saturday. Now you're saying, where is Gibbs Shoal? It's off of Inglehard. It's about an hour by car inland of, of Manio and uh, down Highway 264, but this, uh, I've been helping these guys and girls with the Englehart Volunteer Fire Department, and uh, this is a fundraiser, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Right now, our entries are looking good, and all of that is uh, based on uh, three categories, which are drum, trout, and sheephead. Now, in each category, first place is a thousand bucks, so it's really got generated some interest. It's an angler's tournament, and if you want more information about it, or if you want to support the tournament by coming out and buying a plate of food uh, at Madame Mesquite High School uh, around 4.30 in the evening, you can do that. We will be out there. That's where the whole tournament will be started from, run from. Weigh-ins are from 2 to 4 on Saturday, this coming Saturday. So come on out there and say hello. It's going to be fun. We've got some great sponsors, and uh, we're looking forward to our first tournament. And before I leave you, I, I was thinking about some of these things that are in every day's fishing report and consistent. And uh, I'm going to call them the old reliable species. The ones you can count on that have been holding their own in numbers and catches, stuff like that. And I would have to say sea mullet would be at the head of the list. Because I know uh, Jenna Crossway keeps me informed and she has been blistering the sea mullet not only on the Crystal Dawn, the headboat she works on, but also in her own boat. Uh, just fun fishing in the sound. And uh, so that's one of them, whether it's on the pier. Or the We've been talking about sea mullet since March. Uh, sheephead is the other one. Really strong. They had a good bite on sheephead on the Bonner Bridge Pier. That is uh, one of the best places to go, although it does get fairly busy at times. But uh, the sheephead numbers seem to be good the last few years. It seems like there's a lot of those red drum, all size ranges, all size classes, are, are biting right now, and uh, they've been going every summer. And the last one would be the speckled trout because we had some really big ones in the spring. We'll have more big ones in the fall. But a lot of that fishing can be done off the bank, which is what makes them pretty nice. You can wade or you can use a kayak or whatever you want to do. So those four, sea mullet, sheephead, red drum, speckled trout, are old reliables, at least for this week. And that is what I have for you today in the way of a fishing report. I hope you have a blessed day. Get out on the water and catch a fish, maybe catch a little dinner.